Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host Mozomo and today I can finally give you my review for Cobra Kai Season 5. It goes without saying there will be Cobra Kai Season 5 spoilers ahead, so make sure you like the video and then come back at a later point. So without any further ado, make sure you blah blah blah. Yes. Make sure you like the video and subscribe if you haven't already and let's just get straight into the video okay so cobra kai season five it is crazy it is big it is expensive what do you get if you cross a karate movie from the 80s and give it netflix money well you get cobra kai season five and honestly it is the biggest the baddest the most thrilling the most action-packed karate kid slash cobra kai we have ever seen yes it is amazing but it wouldn't be much of a review if i didn't criticize it so here are some things i didn't like too much about the show the first four episodes are definitely the slowest out of the season and it just sort of you're watching them sort of waiting just to get to the end almost See, episode 5 for me is where it really changed. There was a certain switch on episode 5 and at that point I was like, okay, now I'm invested. The whole Mexico thing with Miguel leaving, not only was it dragged out, I just don't think it was needed whatsoever. Because Miguel and Robbie, they didn't really connect at all, so it, it can't have been for that relationship. Robbie and Johnny, sure they had that fight which sort of connected them it might have actually been the turning point but what annoyed me most about mexico is miguel's dad was built up to be some crazy you know super bad uh, just a dangerous person and we see him for what seems to be i don't know max 20 minutes of the show i spent the rest of the season thinking oh he's gonna come back oh uh i don't know somehow terry silver's gonna get him back but no he nothing happened that trope out of the way let me say something good <laughs> now deep fake william zapka listen if you told me last year or when season four finished that i would see william zapka from from 1984 i would say you are tripping there is no way on this planet but then i would owe you some money i suppose because that's what we got that whole you know therapy session with crease arguably the the best character development we've seen for sensei crease you see the younger self you see his girl you see johnny from karate kid one it's still crazy to me now for me chosen oh my god he he carried this season he this is his season this is Cobra Kai is his show. He shows what real karate means. He, he, oh my God. It's basically if we had Pat Moira still playing Mr. Miyagi, Chosen would have been the same role. It was amazing. Another thing I didn't really get along with was the power scaling of this season in general. Um, example, Kenny has become one of the most powerful, you know, this guy could take on Thanos, bro. He's become so powerful. Look, I know the ref was paid off or whatever. He still managed to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hawk, arguably the best, yes, arguably the best fighter in the show. And you got people like Mike Barnes, who says he hasn't trained or he gave up karate. So we're talking a good 30 years of him not being in the dojo or whatever. And still, he's able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Daniel LaRusso. Who still trains look it's not a perfect show it's not a perfect season but this is why we love it you know it knows what it is it, it plays on the corniness and the disney channel-esque jokes and the and the nicknames like faux hawk like some of them land and some of them don't lapusso that landed faux hawk no it's not working it's not it's like people calling me nemo Nemo Zone Mo. It okay, it does work a little bit, but I, I'm not admitting that it does work. One thing that was super, super refreshing about Cobra Kai season five is just the relationships between people. You, you're not like it, it got so boring and so draining, like everyone hating each other all the time. Daniel and Johnny finally just 
you can get along and we share scenes with them and they're actually good together that isn't fighting or arguing the same goes for Miguel and Robbie and Sam and Tori for that matter it, it was the show of the redemptions which slightly irritates me as to why Sensei Kreese did not get a redemption arc. They really missed an opportunity here to just redeem his character, even from Karate Kid 1 or Karate Kid 2 at the end, at the beginning slash end of Karate Kid 1. They could have really, really redeemed his character. Instead, they made him do the same thing that he always does, fake his death. He's just gonna be back, isn't he? I, I fear that season six is gonna be the last. I can imagine you know, maybe a time jump, Johnny and Carmen have their baby, but I feel like they could have redeemed Kreese and for whatever reason they didn't, could have really helped the, the team fight these senseis, which are like so overpowered, man. And then you got Johnny and Chosen, their battle endurance is insane. It was like I was watching Dragon Ball for like the last 40 minutes of the show. And you got those senseis, they're just overpowered. And then you had all the weapon stuff. That was cool, actually. And Terry Silver finally going to jail. But you just know he's not... He's definitely not finished, though. He's definitely got something up his sleeve. So, yes, I do think we are going to get a season six. It was confirmed by John Hurwitz slightly in a tweet before. I'll try to get it on screen now. I think that wraps up my review. So, overall, the season was wild, crazy. And it really, <laughs> really had the Netflix treatment. And it was a brilliant show but i did have some tropes or downsides as any show does but if you did like this review please let me know in the comments below like the video and if you haven't already subscribe and also hit me up on any of these social media platforms thanks goodbye hmm.